welcome back to another episode of No Waco. This is your host, Debbie. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. I'm your host, Debbie, and today we have a very special guest here in the studio. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Matthew Nixon, and I run uh, Holiday Tintype. Uh, it's a photography studio. Wow. And uh, one of the first questions I always ask is, what brought you to Waco, or are you a Waco native? I'm not a Waco native. Um, I am a Texas-born, but uh, moved to Waco maybe five years ago. Okay. Um, then I moved away from Waco for two years, and three years I moved back. So, there you go. Um, I'm pretty much stuck here, I think. So. <laughs> stuck here. Um, yeah. A lot of creatives say that. They say they came here, ended up leaving for some reason or other, and now they're back. Mm-hmm. Um, they call it the Waco suck. <laughs> my, my hometown was that way, too. It was like people always say they can't get away from it. So mm-hmm. Thankfully, I did. But no, I like Waco. It's... Uh, I don't feel stuck here. But. Yeah. And and you've been able to see a lot of development since you've been here in Waco. Um, what are some of your favorite things about living in Waco now? I think the, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to sort of make friends here finally, which was something I didn't really know how to do. Um, but with new businesses opening, being a business owner has kind of given me the opportunity to sort of like, force myself on to other businesses, I guess. Yeah. And, and we love that. Yeah. Sort of weasel my way into being <laughs> friends with the owners and tricking them and <laughs> making them think I'm cool. But it, it's been nice. I, I like, I like the growth that I've seen yeah. with small businesses here and how much the community's kind of pulled together. And I mean, I think true Jamaica was a really great example of like yeah. how much the community will, you know, bond together to help save another business. So yeah. I really like that. And um, I think I hear people say a lot that it's like a big, small town. Yeah. So I like that a lot. We get the vibes of a small town, but we're still big enough to not see each other every Absolutely. day. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I lived in Austin for almost a decade, and I I get a lot of that feel with the creativity in restaurants and, you know, the little nooks and crannies that you find of, you know, small businesses doing cool things, but without the, you know, major, I guess, overpopulation. I yeah. Don't know. It's, it's very busy there. So. Yeah, I got that. Um, but yeah. And that's great because we are like right in the middle between Austin and Dallas. So oh, when you do want to go visit those places, we're a great place to be. Um, but also our community itself is standalone. So we kind of have that opportunity um, for growth here. And mm-hmm. we're able to do more things here, um, especially when it comes to small businesses. Um, so with you being a small business owner, um, tell me how you got started doing this and tell me what you do. Oh, I take... Uh, describe it. I'm. Uh, I. I take an artisan photographer. Yes, I. I do tintype, <laughs> which is a, a form of photography that was brought about in the 1850s. Wow. Early 1850s, um, and didn't really last very long because it's problematic. But um, I guess it's considered heirloom photography. I do. 90% portraits. Um, I dabbled in, you know, landscape and things like that just when I'm free to do so. But mm-hmm. um, what I got, what sort of started the ball rolling for me was my partner and I went and had one done in Dallas, excuse me, by a woman named Ellen. Mm-hmm. Um, she took our portrait, I think two valentines ago and i think at that point i was like okay i I think i can do this i'd I'd had some interest in the past and i realized that uh, it was far more work than i would have ever anticipated just (laughs) watching somebody do it Uh but um i think maybe six seven eight months later i decided Mm -hmm. to, to to go for it and so i bought a camera and started sort of building all of the supplies that I thought I would need. So it, 
I think even to this day, I'm, you know, surfing eBay for things that I still need. So it's like never ending purchases and fights to yeah. get everything in order. So, but yeah, it's, it's all started with getting my tintype done. Yeah. So. That's so great. And yeah. it's, it's become a cycle. And now you do other people's tintypes. I do. So you I might get, inspire them. <laughs> yeah. And I get to, I get to meet other tintype artists that I, I, you know, find interesting and inspired by. And so that's been really cool. And I've gotten to travel to meet some of them. Some of them have come to the studio and some of them have met me at shows in yeah. other cities. So that's, it's been really cool. And I've sort of built this fun little community of friends that do tintypes in other places. So That's so cool. Yeah. So explain a little bit about what a tintype is. Oh, so a tintype is a photograph that's shot directly onto a sheet of aluminum mm -hmm. through a chemical process. So I'll pour one chemical onto a aluminum plate that's been lacquered with the, it's black lacquer. Mm -hmm. um, and what'll happen, uh, or what that chemical is called collodion, and it's a mixture of a few different things like ether, a few different kinds of salts, and I'll pour it onto the plate, let it set up, and then I'll drop it into a silver nitrate bath. And what that does is those two chemicals coming together photosensitizes silver particles mm -hmm. and makes it into a shootable piece of film. That's cool. Yeah. So once I do that, then um, I take the photo and we wash and varnish them and they're ready to go. So I think start to finish the process takes, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Wow. So, That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and you've been doing pop-ups and events and all kinds of fun things. Um, and you've been doing this for almost a year, right? Yeah. we're So as a business, we'll, in January will be our first year. So uh, we've had a lot of growth. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we're I think 20 shy of 2,000 followers on Instagram, which whoop, is whoop. Go follow huge. them. <laughs> yeah, which is huge for me as a small business and, you know, doing something that sort of just started out as like a passion project that I just, when I started actually making photos, I got really excited and then it just sort of snowballed mm -hmm. and became a, a full-fledged business. And But it's been really organic. I mean, I don't think we'd have gotten anywhere without, you know, actually taking people's photos. So it's like, take one person's photo, mm -hmm. they post it on Instagram, and we get more followers. Those followers turn into pop-up, you know, opportunities. And so it's been really cool. It's been kind of a whirlwind. I so, can bet. But, yeah. Uh, and so you guys are Holiday Tintype. So why Holiday Tintype? Why the name? Nothing to do with the holiday season, no, we, but kind so of fitting. We, we kind of just, we rolled around a few ideas. Um, we definitely had other names that were sort of there for a little while. And then I just kind of thought holiday tintype sounded cool. And, I, you know, I thought people think of Doc Holiday and maybe hopefully and... You know, it's cowboys. It's I know it was kind of the wrong part of the country, but it's still westerny. Yeah. I think that, you know, he kind of operated, you know, in the late eighteen sixties, so the time frame was pretty close. So I think, you know, it just sort of felt right for yeah. me. Yeah. And I thought it sounded cool. So I think it sounds cool. Thank you. So <laughs> we've kind of aesthetically I've tried to sort of stay you know with my logo and things like that sort of old-timey westerny just to kind of stay with the feel of you know the age of tintype so that's really cool thank you and now for a word from our sponsors
Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. This is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine Wine and vinyl. vinyl. (laughs) So check us out on roguemedianetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. And just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness of everything. That's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. (laughs) Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. And now back to the episode. Yeah, and you're getting to revive an art form, or as you said, heirloom. Yeah, um, that's kind of been too. happening forever. Um, and now I'm getting to bring it back into 2020, 2023 coming yeah, up. so it's 170-something-year-old art form that's definitely not dead, and it's I don't think it's dying by any means, but it's definitely still, I think, professionally a small community, but mm-hmm. I know there's still hundreds and hundreds of people doing it so that's really cool yeah and so um here in Waco what has it been like starting this business has the community received it with um open arms have you found anybody that's been super interested or um what has it been like being a business owner here um Waco has been good it's been cool I like it's it's been good with meeting new people Mm -hmm. um you know it's trouble with this one (laughs) we're an interesting area to say the least (laughs) it's it's been a it's been a little slower at home growth but Mm -hmm. we're excited to have a home studio that's like a real place for people to come yeah I think that might be a little bit of the problem for us um 
the things that we have done have been good. Um, we've felt very, you know, people are very inviting. Um, I think it's like any small business, there's room for growth and, yeah. you know, we're hoping to do twice what we've done well. last year and, you know, see if we can make Waco, you know, a spot for tin types. So. That's cool. And what is something you would like to see more of in Waco? Hmm. Well, oh. More tin types. More tin types. No, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I like the trajectory that Waco's got right now. It's, it feels to be like it's growing at a pretty steady pace. Since I've been here, I feel like it's really recently started to kind of come into its own and become its own place and not a, oh, it's just second Austin or mm-hmm. second Dallas. Like, I think it's it's Waco, and I think that we're, f- you know, even from when I was a kid, it, you know, pulling out of the shadow of what everybody thinks Waco is or was. And yeah. I like that. It's... I, you know, I want to see more of that. I want to see more of Waco becoming Waco, you know, and growing and staying that big, small town. And, you know, even if it still expands out past Baylor and, yeah. you know, past Hawaiian Falls and all of that. And, you know, I, I think that's okay. It's just stay, stay like it's, you know, Stay on the path that it's on, I guess. That's what you. I'd like to see. So definitely feels good. It feels comfortable. I like being here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as long as it doesn't grow into, you know, more apartments than people and <laughs> things like that, I, yeah. I think that's good. So, yeah. And we're already coming up on the end of 2022. So it's crazy to see even in a year how much growth there's been. Oh, yeah. um, so who knows what's up for the future? Yeah. Um, you're looking into 2023 with your home studio. Yeah. Um, what are some of your goals or what are some of your resolutions you're looking forward to for 2023? Just growing. I mean, I, I want to, I, I would love to make tin type a full time business for myself because. I mean, I'm not old by any means, but I've been I, with the, my remodeling business. I'm mm-hmm. I'm old. I'm old in that aspect. I'm just tired. Um, and it, that business is rough on you. Yeah. So it's I'd like to get to a point where I'm just doing tin type or tin type, and I I silversmith a little bit on the side Ooh. and as kind of another side hustle like tin type is and um i'd love to do just those things and be creative more and not you know worry so much about how much it hurts every time i stand up you know yeah so, i got you um but yeah i think that's kind of my biggest goal i'd really love to have you know more people coming to the studio because pop-ups are are fun we meet a lot of people but i think the intimacy of being at the home studio is a lot cooler um people can come into the dark room with me they can see i mean it's a space you've curated for the experience start to finish they can see the whole process Mm -hmm. if they want to stick around or if they're interested in that so with pop-ups it's a little there's some modifications to some things that we that we use for the shows that i'd like to do to make it a little more you know where people can see some of the behind the scenes stuff yeah um but for the most part it's my favorite thing is like shooting at home that's really cool i think that if we can figure out how to get more people in that would be really awesome um but yeah i definitely you know in saying that though i also would love to do more shows Mm -hmm. um spread out more we you know we're doing a show in houston soon we're gonna go to tulsa in march um and then i spend a 
couple of days in Arkansas where I grew up recently and did really well there. And so I definitely like the idea of doing pop-ups too. So I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> Not I'm, off the table. I'm kind of torn between the two, you know, if I was doing it full time, I could really <laughs> yeah. be okay. So I could, I could do both, but, but yeah, I think that's my ultimate goal is to just like really do more tin type. Yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, I think it's a sustainable thing for me right now. So yeah. I'd like to take advantage of that. So, yeah. Uh, and I consider it more of an art form. Sure. Um, so what has it been like being in the artist community and in the art scene here in Waco? It's been cool. I, I've met a lot of really cool people here. Um, I think for the most part, we've met, mo you know, artists because of it, but I mean, it's like I've met you, you know, uh, our friends at Central Goods, mm -hmm. you know, things like that have kind Shout of... Shout out, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, it's given me the opportunity to, like, do some cool stuff. So, yeah. Like the... I, I mentioned it the other day with Stay Classy with the Harry Potter ball. I mean, that was a lot of fun. I got to make props for it. And That's cool. So that was a lot of fun. And, you know, just things like that. I mean, musicians, I've met some musicians. And it just kind of puts me in a fun place to be as a creative. Yeah. So, but I, know I, I do know that there are, like, hundreds of artists here that I have yet to meet. Mm -hmm. So I think we can add that to my new year's, your new year's resolution <laughs> as to whether or not it's you know involved with tintype or not like that's sort of where my my passion lies is mm -hmm. art so if it's just as friends that's yeah. fine so yeah and finding your community is so important absolutely um has there been anybody that has like helped you along this journey that you want to shout out um i always say you can shout out your mom your dog sure. or your grandma anybody yeah my my mom's been a big help she definitely sat for me a lot in the early mm -hmm. days would come into the into our space and shoot with us my partner kelsey has been you know spent at, countless hours just listening to me just talk about tintype because <laughs> I I my way of solving problems is just talking about it out yeah. loud and then my brain sort of resets and catches it so she's thankfully dealt with a lot of that mm -hmm. um, like I said my friends at Central um, they were a big help especially at the beginning mm -hmm. I think we did our first pop-up with them mm -hmm. and then a second one was at cultivate so. mm -hmm. shout out shout out <laughs> so it's you know and then really i mean everybody that's had us out oh, I mean, wow. it's been a huge thing for us like i said earlier it's if it wasn't for word of mouth things like that like you know um I think that that would be, you know, we'd be stuck. Yeah. A couple of, you know, other tin typers have been huge helps. My friend Jaka, my friend Joseph, Lisa, uh, Kate, Nicole, they're all huge helpers in this whole process of trying to troubleshoot. And, you know, because tin type is a, endlessly frustrating process so, <laughs> i can uh, imagine i think you have to be incredibly stubborn and you know hard-headed and strong-willed strong-willed especially to to stick with it so without them you know helping me through the whole thing i, I don't think i'd be here so oh that's fantastic yeah, so. And it sounds like you've, you know, started making friends and have created this amazing oh, community. Yeah. Um, what is a way that people can find you and find where you're going to be and find more information about you? Um, we are on Instagram. Uh, I believe it's, I have to check. Instagram is holiday underscore tintype and it's holiday with two L's. And yeah, go there. I usually have... Uh, highlight reels that kind of tell where we're going to be and 
what the pop-ups are. There's an appointment block on there, so you can make an appointment. And I'm always – my direct messages are always open for anybody. Slide so, in those DMs. Yeah, That's what I did. <laughs> you don't even have to use the app to make an appointment at the moment if you want to just ask me about it. Mm-hmm. So I usually like to – talk people kind of through the process of what to wear what not to wear so okay. if you're really serious about doing it just you know hit me up that way so but as of right now that's really my only form of you know communication with the outside world on tintype so <laughs> we're hoping to have a website this year next year and like i said i'm going to try to get us onto the googles mm-hmm. so see if we can move that forward and be more accessible to the community and you know, have some fun. Yeah. And that's super exciting. Yeah. And again, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank um, you. This is very fascinating and I love it. It's such a cool idea. Um, and again, I just love the idea of sure. um, doing something that was done back in the 1800s oh, and yeah, doing it today. Hopefully it's less frustrating now than it was back then. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. So, but yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, and is there anything else you want to share with our listeners today? I don't think so. Uh, just, you know, come get some tintypes done. We'll come get some, some tintypes. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Find us everywhere on all social media platforms, K-N-O-W underscore Waco. Check us out at roguemedianetwork.com and we're on YouTube under Rogue Media Network. Check out nowaco.com.